It's Adam here for PC Monitors and in this video I'm going to take a look at some of the weaknesses in pixel responsiveness on the ASUS MX34VQ. The full written review does take quite a detailed look at responsiveness and it's quite clear in the written review that it is actually very good overall. It gives a good solid 100Hz experience in particular. Um, this video uses a scene on Battlefield 1 which highlights some high contrast transitions which all VA models uh, do struggle with to some extent. If you recall on the Philips model I reviewed earlier there was some uh, sorry the I should have mentioned the model number which uh, escapes me at the moment the BDM 4037UW and this had some obvious smeary trailing in, in, in these exact scenes on Battlefield 1 and it was really quite a messy experience and I know I actually managed to put a lot of people off the monitor by showing this. The, the good news is on this monitor there aren't uh, anything like the extent of, of problems with their uh, pixel responsiveness. There's, I mean there's a little bit of trailing um, I kind of call it powdery trailing in the review. For example with the high contrast transition shown here. You can see the symbol uh, there against a, a darker background. There's a little bit of trailing. You may or may not be able to see in the video because it's only quite slight. The same with the horse, especially behind the tail. There's just like a little kind of powdery trail behind it. It's, it's not eye-catching. And if you recall on the Philips video, um, or if you haven't watched it, I would definitely recommend just take a look at the responsiveness section of, of that review. The There was this obvious inky smeary trailing um, on these transitions shown here. It's something I call breakup trailing because this isn't solid black it actually has various other colours within it and they might appear on many VA panels to actually bleed out into the background so I call it breakup trailing. On this it's um, I mean there's a, there is a small amount of it uh, here but it's it's just it's it's pretty minor I'm not even sure it'll be exaggerated slightly on the video but it's not eye-catching when you're playing the game so this video is more of a reassurance than anything for you um, because I, I personally was quite impressed by the responsiveness of this monitor and it isn't just because I've come from that slow Philips I was talking about I've actually been using a Dell S2716 DG alongside this and even so it's um, I mean it's clearly not quite as responsive technically in, in a side-by-side -side comparison but it certainly does do a very good job um, and it certainly feels like a 100 Hertz monitor and looks like one as well which is really good. Some more weaknesses on the Philips were evident on these transitions here and again you can see a bit of breakup trailing and um, there's a kind of slight purple fringe around the telegraph pole and again that might be exaggerated slightly on the video if anything it's you know, it's not particularly eye-catching and it's only specific transitions this kind of thing happens on most of the transitions this monitor um, you know it performs really quite quickly and it gives a really decent 100 Hertz experience um, I should also have mentioned that I am running the game at 100 frames a second so what I'm showing here are weaknesses which do exist uh, even when the monitor is running at its maximum refresh rate and you're displaying the maximum frame rate from the graphics card. On the Philips review there was this um, sort of th this vehicle that came along and started shooting me here and it showed some really quite obnoxious trailing some good high contrast transitions on there but it doesn't seem to have come along um, at the moment so I can't show you that but I have I have looked at it already myself before recording this video and really there were just no no uh, troublesome transitions. So I think the worst example of trailing is probably the breakup trailing here. And it, even that, I don't find it particularly obnoxious, so I wouldn't worry about it really. It's, um, you know, it is subjective, and I say that in the review. There are differing levels of sensitivity to, the, to this kind of thing, and you can't expect any VA model to be completely perfect in that res regard because they're just, they're just not. Um, but this monitor, it's, uh, I mean, it's one of the best VAs I've come across in that respect. So, um, I'm also running it at Trace Free 60, as I mentioned in the review, which I found optimal. There are some issues with overshoot, which I'm going to come on to uh, next, but they're, they're not really, again, they're quite minor issues, except they, they become a bit more major at lower 
refresh rates, which I'll I'll show you, because that is an issue when you're running FreeSync, because as the frame rate dips, the refresh rate of the monitor will dip to match it. So I'll just show you that, which will involve a different scene again on Battlefield 1. I'm now on a scene on Battlefield 1 which shows off the, um, well I say shows off, it highlights the overshoot, the inverse ghosting on the monitor. And this can be reduced slightly by reducing the trace free overdrive setting, but as explored in the review you do get a bit more conventional trailing if you do that. And actually unless you pretty much turn off trace free you will get a bit of this anyway. And again it's not particularly eye catching. and. I've specifically chosen this scene because it does highlight it. It's not something that's widespread and it's not something that you generally do come across. But um, again, it's running at 100 frames a second at the moment, so the monitor's at 100 hertz. And you can just see where there's particularly bright shades, such as in the sky here, against some sort of medium, darker shades, especially around that blimp. There is a bit of a sort of halo trailing. It's not particularly bright, it's not particularly obnoxious. There's also a little bit of dark trailing if you look at the transition the other way. Um, there's a slight kind of black band on the edge of the, the blimp. I'm not sure if that will come across in the video. Again, it's, it's not particularly eye-catching when you're just playing the game. It's not like some overshoot, which really is massively in your face. So, And this is the most extreme example, really, I could find on this game. Um, But um, if I reduce the frame rate, or more specifically I reduce the refresh rate, I've got FreeSync active, so when I reduce the frame rate, it will actually reduce the frame rate, uh, sorry, the refresh rate of the monitor as well. So if I turn everything up quite considerably, you see the frame rate is now around 60. So the, the monitor is running more or less at 60 hertz. And I don't know if you can see on that tree, there's more, it's a more obvious overshoot. The bright trailing is brighter and more extensive. And it's um, actually got a slight rainbow effect on it as well. Um, and again, near the blimp, it's more obvious bright trailing. It is quite common to have overdrive, which is best optimized for the highest refresh rate that a monitor supports. Uh, with, especially with FreeSync, I do find that quite often with the lower refresh rates the responsiveness isn't as well optimised and you do get some more obvious issues with overshoot and that sort of thing. And that is the case here. It is something that G-Sync monitors generally do better. But, um, you know, I don't want to start a FreeSync, G-Sync war or anything. Uh, I just wanted to point out that this does have some more obvious overshoot at lower refresh rates. Now, another issue. It's not exactly to do with responsiveness and it certainly isn't something that's unique to this monitor is at certain lower refresh rates right at the lowest end of the FreeSync range which on this monitor is 45 Hertz. So anything below about 50 Hertz it start, or 50 frames a second in the game it starts showing flickering and it really only shows it between 45 hertz and 50 hertz because, as mentioned in the review, if things go below 45 hertz, um, sorry, 45 fps, the monitor uses LFC or, or the graphics card uses LFC, and the monitor will stick to a multiple of the um, frame rate for its refresh rate. So it'll actually be effectively above that problematic 50 hertz anyway for for most of the. Uh, you know, slight drops below 45, so that's not a problem either. So there's a very narrow band that actually this flickering is involved with. Um, and I'll have to be quite precise about the changes I make to actually get into this band. It's quite tricky. Now you can see there um, that the this is actually, it's called a frame rate counter, but it's actually a refresh rate counter. That's flicking all over the place. That's because I've managed to make the refresh rate go just below the 45 um, frames a second it fluctuates a bit a bit above a bit below so LFC is kicking in and it's actually rising uh, the frame rate is rising quite dramatically it's all over the place the refresh rates all over the place um, so I'm gonna try and get it at a stable uh, 45 in fact you can see it now you can see it it's it's actually 50 um, frames a second at the moment 
and I don't know if it'll come across on the video but to my eye you can see flickering and again this only happens between 45 frames a second and 50 frames a second um, it is a bit annoying um, you know but then again as I explore in the review I wouldn't like to use this I mean the, the monitor really has its greatest potential at much higher frame rates than this anyway and I actually got most enjoyment out of the monitor running it at about um, a sort of a solid 100 frames a second on my much faster NVIDIA card so as an NVIDIA user I certainly wouldn't be put off this uh, monitor and as an AMD mon uh, user I would just try to make sure the frame rate is a bit higher than 50 if, if possible um, even without the flickering the, the, the experience at that kind of frame rate is certainly suboptimal anyway so I mean that's all I really wanted to talk about in this video it's obviously not a full review and it's not supposed to be massively detailed it's just designed to complement the uh, written review and because I don't have the time to actually do enough time with this monitor to do a full video review I thought I'd at least show you some of the key aspects of responsiveness on the video as well